the signs and symptoms of causes. How do I know that I am under a curse? It's important. How do I know that there is a curse running in our family? How do I know that so 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 neighbor, this problem he's having is likely to be a curse? When we understand it, it will help us to be more serious with praying the prayers. And uh, let's see the book of First, Second Samuel, chapter three, from verse twenty-eight. Second Samuel, okay. And afterwards, when David had it, he said, "I am my kingdom." A guilty let before the Lord forever. From the course of Abner, the son of Ner, let it rest on the head of Joab, on all his father's house, and let there not fail from the house of Joab all that has an issue that is a leper, all that leaneth on a staff, all that falleth on the sword, all that lacketh bread. So Joab and Abishai, his brother, we can leave that. So you know the rest of the story. This is a very typical example of a curse. And there are many of them in the Bible. And they were had negative utterances. Reuben had received it from his father. It damaged the man, damaged his life, damaged his tribe. The whole of his generation, they began to die. And became so few that he took the utterance of Moses to reverse it. Which means you can learn from there also. By positive words, we can reverse causes. Blessings can cancel causes. Am I communicating? Then, I also want you to remember that David scattered not just only Joab. Jacob, also Israel, when he was about to die, he called his children in a very peculiar manner. And they gathered. He hammered one cause on Levi and uh, Simeon. And I told you what happened to the tribe of Simeon. They, they, in fact, they faded out of the whole of the list. You, will know, you can't hear about them again. When you go and read the blessings, when Moses was blessing the different tribe of, of, uh, of Israel, there was no mention of Simeon. They have been wiped off, scattered all over Israel. It, this is how causes work. When you see a family, you come into a family, you begin to discover that first child, a girl, second child, a girl, fourth child, a girl, sixth child, a girl. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's a sign. Six, seven is a cause of idolatry and bloodshed in that family. It's a sign that there is bloodshed and idolatry. God himself is trying to wipe them away. Another sign again is in the book of Hosea. I think Hosea chapter 9. The Bible says, give them, oh God, what will you give them? He said, give them a miscarrying womb and dry breast. That's serious. From the throne of God. So when you see there are people, first child, miscarriage, second, miscarriage, eighth, miscarriage. I've seen things. Every four or five months, the woman gets pregnant to, only to have miscarriage. I also want us to understand that Sometimes it's not only causes from family sin that causes such miscarriages. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Wicked men can also, by bewitchment, manipulate the sex of a, of a child. Are you hearing me? Each time the woman takes in, there will be what? Female birth. So these two matters should be considered. You look into them. Just like Many times, a lot of people thought some years ago, they had this impression that every time a man is having sex in the dream, or a woman is having sex in the dream, there is a demonic spouse, probably spirit husband for the woman, spirit wife for the man. Am I communicating? But today, we know better. It's not only demonic aspect, but there is what we call witchcraft sex, or uh, Witchcraft for sex. What does that mean? You discover that a human being may love you and be projected to be coming to use you. And you'll be going from deliverance to deliverance. If the people conducting that deliverance are not spiritually wise, for the next one year, they are still doing deliverance on you. Why the person is smoking and laughing? I handled one case some years ago. 
that sister was uh, an usher in our full gospel. And they've been conducting deliverance on her for years. And I, I went to the point I got offended. I said to her, This your spirit husband, all now I know, I bind you in Jesus' name. I'm telling you, that was the way I was pro something is, I got provoked. So now no, I know I bind you in Jesus' name. See, I know he's trying to you know create confusion on my belief on the scriptures. The Bible says, Whatsoever I bind is bound in heaven. So I told her, see me on Saturday by 10 o'clock. Let's meet in the office of the full gospel. And she came. My brother, we started wrestling with this thing. Wrestled with the thing. The anointing and the presence of God filled the whole of the room and the office. At a point, God opened her eyes. Only for her. That was the fact. God used that to teach me this issue I now write about human which is using people. Suddenly, she saw a man. A man she knew when she was in secondary school, class 5. In those days, we didn't have SS. Uh, it was a 5. Class 5. So, she saw the man and according to her, the man laughed and told her, so now you are, it is only now you are discovering it. In that relish, she, he was mocking at her. I'm working at her Christianity. So I asked her, how do you know this man? She told me that the man was his boyfriend in 19... Kiridibo. What I'm telling you happened around 1976. <laughs> and we are discovering this in 1994 or 93. Are you seeing the, the problem? So I asked her, what well, is it all? He said, no. We discovered that the man is also the person holding her marriage. Because she was already clocking 40-something. Almost, I think, 48 or 49 by the time we are discovering the thing. So, we discovered when we were asking the Holy Spirit. The man wedded her in the astral world. They are, brethren, listen to me. There is what we call astral marriage. Did you hear what I said? Because there is an astral world. Go and read dealing with witchcraft oppression. If you go there, there is a chapter on the astral world. Study it. A lot of people are here there. The Bible says, can you lose the bands of the Orion? What is bound in the Orion is not easy to release. Whether it's a business, whether it is a human marriage or health. Am I complicated? So that sister suddenly began to, you know, God began to talk to her. She now realized that the man used her word. You know, when she was too excited with love, some people fall in love and break their neck. May God give you grace. May you fall in love and be normal. <laughs> you didn't hear what I said. Good. So the man asked, told her, according to what God was showing her, some years ago, the man had told her physically that he, she, he will introduce her somewhere as a wife when, you, when they get to the meeting that, that I hope you don't mind she says she doesn't mind physically there was no such meeting but she has considered to be wedded so with her word he sealed an astral marriage with her anywhere she was this man invades her both in the day and in the night even broad daylight afternoon like this the man will use her. So in this way, these causes can come from wicked satanists. And they can come from your background. They can also come because of where you are living. But let's leave that. Number, a rundown of the different manifestation of causes. One, fruitless hard labor. This is a life of struggles. Nothing. You see a man laboring like an elephant and eating like an ant. Struggle. Suffer head. Some of them to go to school. Now, Wahala. When they get, they get to school, to get to pass every time their papers will miss. Other people's papers will be there, their own will miss. One told me that at a point she got tired of reading for an exam because. She knew the one she felt she prepared best and expected the best result. Either the paper is missing or they will give her let my people go. You know what is let my people go? 
40. So it frustrated. So many times, it, it may not be your lecturer that is your problem. Your problem may be what is following you. Do you know there are some people, what is following them? If they pack into your house, you start having problems. You didn't hear what I said. If, if they enter your car, it is like carrying Jonah. Yeah, we carried one from Kafanchan. Our car spoiled and spoiled until we slept at Umumba. I had to ask God, who is this girl we carried today? Because this is not our first time of going to Kafanchan. We were going to Kafanchan and coming back. But we carried this girl from Kafanchan. Our tire started busting. We kept repairing tire, repair tire until it was night and there is nowhere else to repair tire. So we started using one more, one, the four, no more spare. Only to come out at Umumba in the night, the last one busted. And when I asked her, I gave her, when I came back, gave her some prayers. So when she started praying, the spirit of Unkese and Idemili appeared to her. Physical. They appeared to her, stood before her, warned her and said, what do you think you are doing? You have been handed over to us by covenant. The spirit told her. I was teaching the Amiri girls then. Before 7 o'clock I was coming to school, she was already in the school walking under the mango tree up and down waiting for me. <laughs> As I came, I said, ah, you know what daddy said, where you see food, you know there is problem. And immediately I saw her, I knew trouble don't come. I asked her, she said she, she had not slept since I ran after two, she had a bath and be waiting for the day to break. Number two, when you see yourself having a cycle of evil repayment, for good you do for people, they reward your evil. Do you know that it can be a cost for your family line? I went through that one until I had to go and ask questions. I do good for people, all I receive is wicked, wickedness, evil for, for payment. It bothered me. So I went back home and began to complain, you know, during Christmas, everybody came. I told them, look at what I'm going through. Others have this experience. They said, yes. Ah. Then we went to our uncle. I said, okay, come. Tell us the history of this family. Don't trust all their history because sometimes, many times, I discovered by our culture, our elders don't like to speak evil of the dead. Did you hear what I said now? They don't like to speak evil of the dead. But by the grace of God, when I got my, we got our uncle, when he came out to where the problem really came, but it was one of the wickedness of our fathers. Our great-grandfather rewarded maximum wickedness to somebody for the good the person did for him. And the family, were, we were suffering it. Even our uncle that was telling us the story, didn't put, he didn't see the link. Hear me? Even when you read some of the things written by Yeye Kanan Ben and Eteis in the WhatsApp, always remember that the Bible says that Kanan, that spiritual things are spiritually discerned. Am I complicated? So, number three or four now. Delayed marriages or marriage problems of varying degrees and then sudden death. God spoke about it. It's part of the causes that follow idolatry. It's part of the causes that follow idolatry. In any family where there is deep idolatry, hear me, my brother. Yes, it is Psalm 78 from verse 61. He gave the people over also unto the sword, sudden death, and was wrought with his inheritance. The fire consumed their young men, sudden death. Their maidens were not given to marriage. Did you see that? Did you see that? Good. So when you have time, read it from verse 57. It's about idolatry. Causes that follow idolatry. Then number four or five now. Compulsive alcoholic consumption. Smoking. Drug abuse. And when you see that, some people will tell you that why is it there is no causes in Europe, in America. And so go and see whether there is anybody that abuses drugs more than them. 
you don't know that that's also a, those are manifestation of causes and some of them it run in their families showing you that it's a, it's a heredity it's a generational curse is somebody hearing me here so when you live here don't allow anybody to confuse you we are all human beings created by God the same way and the Bible is the same there is no new generation Bible and are, are you hearing what I'm saying it's the same Bible so that when your children as a Christian as a mother when your children begin to open their ears and we are, and we are hearing and you say it's the new this thing you are, you are not well old. there is something like a new generation Christianity is there a new, new generation Bible is it not the same Bible chronic servitude Chronic servitude. You can never be in charge. There are such people, they always stay. This is a case that you used to know a family where there was slave trade. Slave what? Slave trade. When they, in the book of uh, Acts of the Apostles, when they, they were, when they, this man died, um, when uh, Judas killed himself, you remember the story now? Uh -huh. The Bible says that the apostles they met and decided to choose somebody to take over and when they came they said his bishop brick let another do what take that's when you study it you discover that that's a case that you will always see in the family of whose parents were into slave trade in different form they are always they use them as a foundation diggers they will go, they say, we want to plant a church there. Because listen, that the person is a pastor does not exclude him from the case. Quote me. Or rather, let me use an example. A pastor came here. And then, I, he told me his problem. He said that yeah, he's going through an experience that he doesn't like. I said, what is it? The church looked at him as one of their best instruments. Sent him to Lagos to start a branch of their church. They what I'm, what I'm trying to say, they are always foundation layers. He went to Lagos, started a branch of the church. You know what it means to start a church? It's not easy. It's not easy to start a new ministry. He, this man struggled and suffered and started a church in Lagos. Immediately he finished the church like the members of the church have finished by the line to stand down and say, what can we do for our pastor? He was transferred. Where did they transfer him to? To Okunano, near Honorable Obodo's house. <laughs> a branch of their church there. That's where they transferred the man. The man came there. Their church there was owing. They were owing the landlord so much money that to pay his salary was a problem. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now, according to him, when he looked at the salary that the church was, the house rate, the church was owing and what it would take him to pay it and so on. He went and bought an empty space of land with the money. He raised, bought an empty space of land, relocated the church to the empty space and started raising a dwarf wall. You know that that is a life of sacrifice. He was doing everything, put up roof and so on. After all that suffering and setting the church before you can say that the church will buy him and the family a loaf of bread, they trapped him again. And guess where they posted him to? Their branch in Urum. Urum. Not this Urum you know now. Urum now is a city. <laughs> that time, there is only one car that goes to Urum every day. And you will normally enter that car at a car car market. It was Land Rover. Ancient Land Rover. Where they pack all the plantain on the top and on the front bonnet. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's where, that was when that man was posted there. When he finished, you see, there are some prophecies that you do, not because you had any voice, but because of study, knowledge. Because our people say, no, I hear Madden Azoko man, yeah. The market where somebody they sell, he sabi at the secret. So, Immediately he said all these things. I told him, I said, have you ever tried to find out some things about his background? He said he found he had got to, he had done that. I said, there is deep idolatry and slave trade in your family. He said his grandfather, he was told, was 
a terrible slave dealer. Even some of the paraphernalias used in the slave thread are still in the house. Are we still talking? His bishop brick, let another take. Some of them, when they are qualified to be given an office, there will be some shaking. Before you know it, either they transfer him or they, 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 they will even retire. So I've seen cases they were retired. One man here, his own case was worse. He was retired because of an anonymous letter. Ask anybody in government. An anonymous letter is a faceless letter. Government don't do anything with it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But this man's case, he was not made a director during the time of the military government simply because of an anonymous letter. He lost it. You know those days, to be a director, you know what it means. When you become a director, not now. When you're a director, you're still, you still hungry. You get some gardener, get, a, get allowance for a cook. All kinds of things. Your life had changed. He can't enter into that place, into that shoe, because there is a curse following him. You need to look into your own life. The next point, six. They normally have reproductive uh, problems. If it's not barrenness, it's miscarriage, it's impotence, it's low spam count. Number seven. They normally have a, a cycle of premature death of the male population. Of course, you don't need to go far. Uh, from most of you who have been here, my family was a good example. Okay? And the death is mainly the male population. When you get to those families, most of the male are young. Adult male, they have died. They hardly live long. It is the old women that surround the family that tell the history of the, of the family. It's a case. I went to a family somewhere behind here. Some years ago, some of my workers here now, we are there. This boy was a student in Unizik. And we got to their family. A student of 24 years. He is the head of the family. 24, undergraduate. He's the oldest man in the family. I found that was why we decided to carry. We went to do that prayer without allowing him to spend anything. Because why? He couldn't afford anything. Then when we finished, the boss we hired for the meeting, I was already in the front seat for us to come back home. The, men, the women we are calling, we are calling him. Nabiao, uh, I want to farm the other land because as the head of the family, the women, all the women must give him respect as the head of the family. Who is the head? 24-year boy. It's good you know. Some people don't know. And that's why, like one man, one politician in Nigeria, he said the wind blew him from the wrong side. If the wind is blowing you from the wrong side because of ignorance, you will lose. That's why you need knowledge. Number seven, not eight. All female bats without male. Six to seven girls without a boy. I was even told about one case, there were nine girls. So, I've, I've discussed that. Number nine, outright poverty. Persistent hindrance. Financial insufficiency. Nothing works. Send them here, it will fail. Send them here, it will fail. Huh? Tomorrow they tell you that it is not education. They are not interested in education. That they want to go and learn uh, how to sell uh, drugs. So that they will do patent medicine. Okay, send them there. After six months, nine months, he will come back home. What is the problem? He said he doesn't like that thing. What do you want to do? Uh, in fact, uh, he wants to sell alumaco. He wants to uh, do uh, learn alumaco. It's a case. Spare parts. Is somebody here with me? Persistent hindrance and poverty. And let me also tell you something else. When you see these families, when their children are intelligent, there will be no money to send them to school. And when you look at them, exceptionally intelligent children, but no money to send them to school. And some of them, when they decide to go to school, there will be no money to train them. Mental sickness or generational sickness. There are families you will go and you see that somebody is always mental in that family. Yeah, yeah, sometimes he will be doing like this. You know, you know that everything is not complete. Are you hearing what I'm saying? 
Uh -huh. Or they will be having a sick, generational sickness. You know, you see that that's the father, the grandmother was also having that sickness. The father's mother had that sickness. The great grandfather's mother had the sickness. That's a curse. Break it. Otherwise, this is running in the family. Diabetes is not a communicable disease. Are you hearing me? Stroke is not a communicable disease. And when you see such, such sicknesses running in the family, your father had it, you had it, and the hospital will tell you that it is uh, in your family. It's in your family because the spirit, the cause that is transferring from generation is there. Break it. Tell yourself, I am the different that make the difference. Somebody say, I am, I am the difference that make the difference. My case is different. When you pray like that, angrily, the spirit will leave you and know that this one is your own difference. But if you leave it, you'll be surprised. He doesn't have respect for the number, the, the size of the Bible you are carrying. If you like, carry the, the, the you, are you talking about it? Carry the, the Bible that is as big as the Ark of the Covenant. He doesn't have respect. If you like, have 20 ordination and have five colors on your neck. It has no meaning. These are causes. I handled a pastor. The pastor came here. My office was here. I've said it before. And the guy came. What's the problem? In their family, before you were 28 years as a boy, you were a millionaire. But from the age of 39, 40, 41, they start falling. And as they start falling, nothing catches them. No matter the effort, he will hit the ground. They are never rich till they die. And the thing has been in the family. When they become millionaires very early, they enjoy it. They didn't know that these are spirits. Satan has no good gift. Nothing from him is free. And so, eventually, the man, according to him, he became, he grew up, became a pastor. And felt that as a pastor, it will not reach him. Before you say Jack Robinson, they made him a young a manager as a very young man in the bank. Before you know it, he began to rise. As he was getting 39, 40, trouble started coming. Even the bank where he was manager had to, had to was liquidated and closed down. All kinds of problems. The man came here and met me. Said, Chima, I want you to take you to my family. I say, wait. He, because he's now desperate. He wanted to be done immediately. I told him, within this period, you are saying I'm booked. I don't have time. Unless we put it no time. He said, Chima, I need this thing now, now, now. Ha! Ah. I said, it's not possible. He just left the office. I thought he was angry. That time, money had value. Money had value. I was still newly married. The guy went outside. I didn't know he parked outside. Collected one wrap of 50,000 naira and came back and dropped it on the table. Imagine the teacher, how much was my salary? <laughs> I told him, I said, no, if it is like that, we will go. And let me tell you, that journey has been a, it has helped to form many of my books. I learned so much from that journey. There are spirits, there are families that when you get there, do you know the way flies? If you go to a, on, uh, some of these mango trees, that are in the forest that nobody goes to have it. And they normally fall and cover the whole ground. And the, after eroding, eroding. Do you see the way flies covered all of them? Some families, that is how bees besiege them. If they open your eyes and you see demons, hey, you'll be, you, you'll be worried. But you know the funny thing? So many members of the family are sitting there laughing. I'm talking, <laughs> like my own family. The demon of anger in my father's compound was something else. And you know, during the war, I wasn't born again. We didn't know what was going on. <laughs> Whenever there is fight, quarrel, and oh, this one will draw his knife, the other one will draw it out, we'll be laughing. <laughs> we didn't know there was trouble. This is a terrible cause in the family. It's a curse. Break the course and you see a change. Mental sickness, immorality, 
as a family sin. There are families you get to and you will discover that immorality is part of their second name. You didn't hear what I said. And let me tell you, even after they are born again, it's still a problem. It's a case. It's a matter you deal with seriously. I listened to, I read the book of one of the most respected ministers in, in spiritual warfare some years ago. And it humbled me. And I think it made me to be more open and sincere. If you read books of spiritual warfare, you hardly, except the ones written this part of the world, you will see his name, even many of them from here. He's a white man. And he said that immorality is something he buys every day in his life. I said, eh? So this man can say this one. Ah. Are, are you understanding what I'm saying? Ah. There are these things are in families. And let me tell you, some of these countries, including those ones in Europe, they are forefathers. Do you know that there are Africans who were slaves so to uh, Trinidad, so to Brazil, and many of them were from Yoruba extraction. Some of them are from Igbo land. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you go there, you will hear about Sango, but the only thing is that the name will be a little different because of dialectical difference. But it is the same idol. And when you go there, they tell you that they don't hear, they don't hear. And you listen, all of you that are traveling overseas, you need counseling. When you go there and go and relax and feel that everything. These are spiritual men. You are going to a place where there are different gods. I, I thought I'm talking to some people here. Yes. I will see together. Hear me. Some of these places you need to know that one, in the rituals and sacrifices many years ago, I don't know now, they are always asking you to bring tortoise or bring a, a dog. The spirit of the tortoise is the spirit of cunningness. Am I talking to somebody? Everybody knows that. The spirit of the dog is the spirit of what? Immorality. In those days, they say, they use it to open the eyes of the man to see in the spirit. Because dogs are mysterious animals. They see what others don't see. And we sit together. Today, these spirits are like causes resident in the families by covenants. The man is immoral. The wife is immoral. The children are immoral. And you are asking me why a man will be married to a wife only to discover that of the four, five, four children, none of them was given back by him. And yet he is not impotent. First child, the woman said, not the husband. Second one, third one. The fourth one, she's pregnant, carrying. The man was not responsible for any of them. Who is responsible? The former boyfriend, who is an aburu, that didn't have money to marry her. And then a, a, a very educated professional came and married her because that one has money. She followed that one. But every time she wants to get pregnant, she goes to the one she loves, the aburu that has no money. And forget that he will produce children with curses that will squeeze her head and her neck. It's most of, listen, if you see some stupid things, don't, we don't kill her. These are spirits. Spirits can make you can make a man, even an educated man, very educated man, professor, do something that you will say, hey. But that's where we should be able to show understanding. If your brother walks out of the way, lead him gently into the way. Bear you one another's body. In that way, we fulfill the Lord of Christ. Have you read it in your Bible? Please let him that take care that he stand take heed. Lest he falls. It's not of him that will it, but of God that showeth mercy. Am I talking Bible? All right. There are people, when you see an individual or a family, they always have no man. Or an individual is always having multiple problems. We are trying to solve his problem. Yeah, another one come here. Another one come here. Listen to me. Ask him a question. Ask him in your family. You are, go and ask question. Your grandfamily, your grandfather's parents, they were deep into idolatry. And in those days, idolatry goes with so many handbags. What are they? Idolatry goes with number one, giving honor to gods that are no God, that provokes God. Number two, it goes with bloodshed. Number three, it goes with slave trade. Number four, it goes with wickedness. 
The Bible says in the book of Psalms, I think it's in 16 verse 4, their sorrows shall be multiplied that go after other gods. That's where the curse is coming from. Hereditary diseases that are not even communicable, bronchitis, high blood pressure, diabetes, asthma, running in the family. No, something is wrong. Bind it. Number 14. Always a victim of one form of accident or the other. If the, if the market were born, their shop will be the one that will born before the others will be rescued. They go into importation. Their own goods will be seized by a custom and they will refuse to accept bribe. You didn't hear what I said. Their cases are always ugly. Chronic foundation layers. I've told you that they are always chronic foundation layers. When the work begins to blossom, they will be transferred where they have to start again. Originals of a head. That's what I call them. Then you will see straight deformities, retardations from birth as a result of causes. 16 or 18. Straight victimization is like people de derive pleasure in punishing them, even in the office. Unwarranted suspension. Unwarranted removal from office. Then, for instance, some people hardly stay long in a job without a problem. These are some of the signs, frustration that you can use to know that the cause is speaking. Some others, I've told you about late near success syndromes, reversal of fortune. They will be succeeding. You think that they are doing well. Suddenly, everything will go haywire. They begin to hit the ground again. That's a sign of uh, curses. There is something I want to say. Read out here. And then we will go into prayer. I am reading it out from a book. And I saw it. I don't want to doctor it. And I want to give credit to the man. This book is Spiritual Foundation. By one innocent Henry. And look at what he said here. Pay attention. He said... There are four major indices that give answer to the above question. That is character of a curse. The character of a curse. Number one, a curse follows a pattern of manifestation. By pattern, we mean the way it expresses itself in the life of the victim. Number two, a curse follows a timing. In other words, a curse works like a time bomb. Once the set time is up, it explodes. Number three, a cause follows a season. There are causes that manifest within a season. A curse in a place usually go with a particular season of the year. It may be dry season, rainy season, it may be hamatan season, winter or summer. Number four, a curse produces negative effects. A curse cannot be a curse if there are no negative effects that it leaves behind. Each time a curse operates, there are cries of woes, pains, and sorrows. Now, an example. Look at this example. And this example he gave carries all the part four patterns. There is a family a, called A, a family called what? A, who we are known for violence. About 80 years ago, remember, I always tell you that for that is when the trouble was done, it's not the way the manifestation starts. That's why some parents, after all the wickedness, some of them are now involved in banditry. In the days ahead, their children will suffer it. Their wives, some of their wives have kept quiet, but uh, very soon, some of them will die because they don't have such people, don't have a long lifespan, their lives are normally very short. They, are you hearing me? About 80 years ago, they had a quarrel with their neighbors. Neighbors family. Called that family B. This minor quarrel resulted to a fight in the process of, the, of this internal interfamily war that lasted two hours. A young lady, aged 30 years, from family B was killed. This woman was nearly married into the family. Sorry was newly married into that family. 
Her mother caused a serious uproar in the community. Everybody condemned in strong terms the action of the family. A. When the ember was down, the lady was buried. During her family burial, family B members and well wishers pronounced so many curses on the family that murdered the lady. You know, in the places where you see people pronouncing curses, somebody said, No, sir, uh, it doesn't concern me. My brother, those words are not ordinary. You may not see them there. Moreover, some of the sympathizers made pronouncements that the disease should take a revenge on those people who killed her. Everything about this lady was forgotten and life continued as usual. Now listen, look at the cause. Ten years after, for ten years, there are things were normal for family uh, A. Ten years after, something unusual started happening in family A. Any person in their family who clocks 30 and or between 35 dies. You see that that death is following a time, a season. The, their death is usually through accidents. And during the accident, the head of that person normally gets cut off from the body. Again, these accidents and deaths were taking place every two years within the months of September and October. When you see such things happening between so so so, go and find out. I heard about a case. The man they were going for mar they were going for marriage, and some people a family they came up for them collected the pan wine they were using for the marriage and drank it. Till today that family have been drunk cats. And when you see such things in a family, you may not understand what where he came from. There is a curse. The Bible says a curse will not come except there is what a curse. Within 20 years, the family had lost 10 young men and ladies. Going back to our discussion, let's analyze the character of this cause. Amen? Both the righteous and the righteous, we are dying in that family. Because it's a cause. Number one, there is a pattern of event in the family, the curse. Number two, people die between the ages of 30 and 50, 35. Number three, the deaths were usually through accident. Number four, each person that died had his own head cut off from the body. Number five, there is a timing of the curse between September and so on. The accident or death takes place within the months of September and October every two years. There is a season in the operation of the curse. The accident or death took place at the ember months. They occur during the ending of the rainy season. The curse produced negative effects in the family. Members of the family who are getting close to 30 years of age. They live in fear because they will be waiting for their own untimely death and so on. So, this is a picture of how this curse is operate. We are going to pray. We are going to do what? We are going to pray. And I think you have been provoked enough to pray. Let me talk about how to solve the problem so that tomorrow we can face anointing. Amen. Number one, how many you want to get rid of this curse? I want you to do one. Number one, first thing you should do, I'm talking about freedom from curses. Identify or discern the prevalence of a curse. This can be done by simple observation. Two, ask God to show you the source of your problem. We pray and fast and God will tell you. He did it for me. He has done it for many people. Number four. Number three. Discuss with your parents, your grandparents, or elders of your family. When I see sisters or brothers, I ask them, have you ever asked about the history? I say he doesn't know. You see an adult who doesn't know about his history. It, sound, it doesn't sound fine. He doesn't even know about Christianity. That God blesses those who serve him diligently. Number five, four, study your family history. Pay attention to reoccurring experiences. Pay attention to reoccurring experiences. Number two. Yeah. The other ones are number one. A, B, C, D. Now number two. You need absolute determination to be free. This is very important. Determination. You must be ready to pay the price that is needed for freedom. 
What do I mean? Fasting, prayer, midnight watches, and so on. That's the price. So seed where there is need. Some of the causes can come from sacrifice. Balaam raised altars of sacrifice. Altars of affliction. Number three. Repentance from every personal and family sin that opened you up for causes. Repentance. A lot of Christians are discovered they make very little of the repentance. And I want to tell you, please don't. When this is a family and they have, they, are, they have offended God or they are through their grandfather and God said, vengeance is mine, I will repay. The result is that God is backing them. And as long as God is backing them, darkness is covering them. When you come into this family, only wicked may prosper, live long. Light is not there. Now, if you want to bring this thing, you need to bring identification and repentance. Take time. Identify with the sin like Jeremiah, sorry, Nehemiah. In the book of Nehemiah, chapter 1, from verse 5, the Bible said Nehemiah began to confess the sins of the father. Nehemiah was a prophet. Are you even a prophet? Here was a prophet. And when he was praying, he said, Father, forgive us for I and my father's house we have sinned. When you begin the repentance seriously and that you don't support it, gradually God will begin to turn towards you to see whether you are serious and you continue. And then when mercy comes, God is facing you. The light of the glorious gospel is shining on you. The presence of the Holy Ghost is now upon you. When you tell the demons, I bind you, I break your power, there is the presence of the Holy Ghost energizing the prayer. But when God was here, that's why since you've been praying, you got born again. Nobody in your family has gotten born again. Prayer requires order. Follow the principles of the Bible. Our God is a God of justice. Did I communicate? Repent of all hidden bias. Biases against God. And accept God's forgiveness for you. It is also wrong for you not to forgive yourself after God has forgiven you. I'm sure you heard me. When God has forgiven you, you don't have any reason not to forgive yourself. Forgive all those you are holding on forgiveness. Remember, God will forgive you according to the measure you are able to do what? Forgive others. Without sincere forgiveness, you cannot be forgiven. And hear me, this last scripture I'm saying here, Luke chapter 6 verse 38. The problem with many Christians here, looking at me now and outside, is inability to forgive others. A lot of us, when we say we are, we are forgiven, if you go inside their heart, it's still there. They have not changed. And the Bible says God is ready to forgive you to the level you are able to forgive others. So please, learn to be open and sincere. Learn to forgive people. Some of you like, I don't know why so many Christians like to carry bitterness and keep odds. It doesn't help you. That's why you see Christians. They are powerful in prayer. They are heavily anointed. But nothing is working in their lives. Nothing is working. The anger of a man can never work out the, the, what? the righteousness of God. Hear me. Learn to be meek. Your Christianity must mature to brokenness. You are a Christian. After one year, two years, there is no brokenness. You are still wild. You are not born again. You are a tool in the hand of the devil. I don't care how many scriptures you carry off there. You can be a moving Bible. It has no meaning. I thought somebody is hearing me here. Number five. Renounce all strange covenants. Renounce dedications, charms, initiations into your life. Renounce all agreements your parents and grandparents have done with the demons. I listened to a tape about a man of God, heavily anointed. I've shared it here before. This man, heavily anointed, he will start a church. And then if he close, another problem will come. He will go to another town after many, many years. 
Started another one. His heavily anointed church grew. Wonderful teacher of the world. Another problem hit the church again. He closed down. The church closed down. After many years, he went to another place. In this last one now, where he was, church grew. While he was doing a martial baptism, came to the turn of a pregnant woman. As he said, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. The woman slipped out of her hand, disappeared inside the water with the pregnancy. They couldn't find the woman. And yet the woman, the, the water wasn't a big river. It's a shallow stream. At the end of the day, they arrested him and put him in prison. By the time he was in prison, God began to speak to him. And then the brethren and ministers that came there, now we are praying, and God began to speak. What is the problem? His father was a satanic priest. And he is supposed to be the next person to take over the shrine priest, priesthood. Listen to me. That's dedication. Satanic priesthood, if in your family, if in your family, somebody was a native doctor, a satanic priest, as a wine, there is satanic priesthood in that family of four. And listen, Satan copies the original of God. He copies the priesthood. The Levitical priesthood runs in the family line. And Satan copied it. If you have not dealt with it, hear me. Whether you are a minister, hindrances are following you. I don't care whether you are a, a, as a Christian. You will see him, the spirits will deal with you. They will frustrate you. So what do you do? You need to take time and renounce it properly. Humble yourself to proper separation and deliverance prayer for that covenant. Because two cannot work together except they agree. You must disagree with it. This one is not about positive confession. Number six, use the power that is in the name of Jesus and break the causes that is oppressing your life. That's the one we've been doing here. Destroy the effect. The controlling powers of such causes in your life and destiny. Break it over your life, over your marriage. Clear your house and your environment of all accursed materials. Destroy them spiritually and physically. Going to carry them and burn them is not enough. What you don't know, ask for knowledge. I have seen Christians, they went and burned the shrine in their father's compound and they became mad. Why? You are dedicated to that altar. A get man can never ask his manager, manager, why are you coming late? What will happen? They will sack him that day. So, you are still dedicated to that altar until you renounce it properly and separate it. Brother, you are not qualified to attack it. A very respected intercessor in this country, they went to deal with a particular, a particular idol. And the idol is the name of is a water spirit idol. And his name, water spirit name. As the man, as they appeared there with great respected intercessor, before he could join them to pray, bah, he fell there and died. The ministers had to leave the prayer and started praying for him first. And told God that this is not good. And at the end of the day, they called him back to life. And of course, nobody told him to leave, that, leave the place. He's not qualified. My brother, the Bible said, by wisdom, you make war. Seek knowledge. So many Christians in the last days I discovered, they want everything, meat pie, meat pie, meat pie, fast, fast food. Eh? Burger, burger Christians. Hamburger. Can I tell you, meat pie, hamburger, they are fast, all fast foods. They are not nutritive. I thought somebody said, here. They don't have balanced diet. Eight, deal with the spirits enforcing the causes. The supervisory spirits. Number nine, prophetically pray for restoration of all the enemy has stolen. Pray for divine blessing. Stop speaking evil of yourself. And I tell you, your destiny must change. I will sit together. I feel the presence of God now. The presence of God has entered here now. In a special way. Can we all stand? Start praying in tongues. Begin to blast in tongues. Yes.
The presence of God is here. Pray the spirit, pray the spirit. Pray the spirit. Lepuka sakata, Maya labo sekete, Jana labra laga do sekete, Maya labo kebo kasakata, Enkabo libra derebo, Shegede legede, Enkapala pra la pa ya bandero, Jaga le ba le banderebo, Zegede gede, Enkato ba sata sata sata, the spirit. Open your mouth and pray. Pray from the stomach, not from the mouth. Let it come from your stomach. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Get violent. It is war. Yes. You are coming. Masakata bada da 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 Yala brala ba de de bo, shada la gada gada, e brava la ba masakata. Be broken, be destroyed in the name of 
Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to pray. shall be delivered. Amen. Even the lawful captive shall be delivered. Amen. We break their hold over your death. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. We speak into the waters. Oh, yes. We speak into the waters. Amen. Into the forest. Amen. Into the covers Amen. of the witches and wizards. Amen. Into the astral war. Amen. Into the occult war. Amen. We speak into the graveyard. Jesus. All your stolen blessings. Jesus. All your stolen blessings. Amen. All your stolen graces. Amen. All your stolen stars. Jesus. Let them be released. By fire. Amen. Let them be released. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 
Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Ghost. We are story changes today. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name.